Previously on the Tesla build, well, I tried to be green and join the eco revolution. <coughs> Having picked up the world's cheapest Model S for the bargain price of £7,000, all was looking great. I had an action plan to transform the car on a very tight budget and even brought the majority of parts to do that. But just 48 hours after taking delivery, disaster struck and the Tesla would no longer power up. Together with the AA, we tried to fix it but had no choice but to get the car recovered back to Tesla, only to then receive a shocking service call informing me of some very bad news. And they are telling me that that Model S now needs a high voltage battery. 17 thousand pounds to replace now fortunately for you guys we have managed to sort out the situation and we've got another tesla i know how much you love tesla content on the channel i'm going to explain exactly what happened and how we rectified the situation a little later on but first of all this now i've just got back from an action-packed motor show where i got to crash cars jump in an army tank and drift around the track for four days solid it was high adrenaline wholesome fun fortunately i can get that same thrill doing exactly the same things by playing tactical tactical takes gaming to the next level it's a free to play action packed top down shooter in which tactics and strategy are key to achieving success on the battlefield this award winning game is available on ios android and pc with drivable vehicles a destructible environment realistic physics this 5x5 action packed game has various modes to play but make sure you use code tactide to unlock exclusive bonuses tactical is not only a shooter but also a social game connecting over 20 million players worldwide there's real player testimonies where players have said that they have met their significant others while playing tactical leading them to getting married in real life you never know you could be finding someone special by playing tactical hopefully you don't run them over first Tactical offers a unique and immersive experience with a variety of customizable heroes and up to 80 real life weapons. There's a variety of game modes such as capture the bag, team deathmatch, battle royale or zombie survival mode. It's real easy to connect with like minded people to form long lasting friendships within the game's clan feature and by using the in game voice chat. And by joining the clan you're going to progress faster while playing with others and having fun at the same time. So getting on the action, download Tactical today by clicking on my link in the description or simply scanning the QR code on screen and to get an exclusive bonus of the Jason Operator RPG grenade launcher and 50,000 silver make sure you use promo code TACTITE. Now I've got to say a massive thanks to Tactical for sponsoring today's video. Now, as you can see, I'm in a different Model S. Before I go into how I'm in a different Model S, I've got to say a massive thanks to everybody who took the time in the previous video to leave comments. I had the most comments on a YouTube video for a very long time, which was shocking for me, considering this is a Tesla. It's not my usual Ferrari content. Anyway, there were some great suggestions in those comments. Some of you were saying simply replace the 12 volt battery on the car. It's most likely going to fix the problems. And the conspiracy theory is that Tesla no longer really want to support the these early Model S's because apparently it's a bit of a nightmare for them. Anyway, no idea how true that is. Um, the other guys were saying contact Rich Rebuilds. I've spoken to Rich before and um, he could advise on what to do with a high voltage power supply. Some of you even thought that uh, it was all set up. It was all clickbait. I promise you guys, I had no idea. That car was working perfectly. Uh, I showed you it, we'd supercharged it, we've used it for two days, and then suddenly out the blue, the worrying thing, there was no signs at all on that car, but it suddenly died out of the blue. Tried to open it the next morning and it wouldn't do it. Anyway, I have uh, gone and done a different thing entirely to rectify the situation. So I bought the original car off my uh, long-term good friend David who runs a company called Go Zero. Now they were using the cars as uh, eco-friendly chauffeur cars for a long time and he's changed the model of the business into a um, charging, home charging uh, business, which we'll talk about later on. Anyway, he just said, no worries, we'll take a hit on it. Good buddy of mine. And uh, he said, look, look, I've got another one. We'll just swap it out and we'll use the other one, the blue one, the original one for parts for a future project. So anyone has got any ideas of what we can use the, uh, the blue car for, I'm thinking uh, some kind of electric Ferrari. Drop them in the comments below. Anyway, that's it. Let's have a look around this car and see uh, what we're gonna do with it. All right, well, you saw the blue car in the last video. Well, this is essentially the same model. It's an 85. It's the uh, single rear motor only. It's not a dual motor car. This is an early version of the Model S. Uh, but 
Other than that, it's essentially the same car, apart from a few just small differences, which I'm gonna point out now. We're still stuck with the early fish mouth, ugly front end. This needs to go. The same 19 inch ugly wheels. They need to go. One good thing though is the car is black and not that horrible dark blue on the previous car. So potentially we could save some money here. I like the black, I can live with the black and obviously this is all about cheap motoring. So the cost we spend on this, if we go on the same route and do all the facelift on it, it's all about keeping it very, very low and having a car that I can enjoy as a daily that uh, I'm happy to drive around in. However, that being said, if we do go down that route, we are still gonna have to do something with the uh, facelift bonnet, hood, and the front bumper. All of that is gonna need to be repainted. Interior-wise, it's much the same as the previous car, except one major difference. The seats are creamy, tan-colored, rather than the black. I did actually prefer the black ones, but this I can live with. The one thing that I'm quite happy about, again, is uh, this infill part here that some people have as a, uh, a fake wood effect. I can't stand that. Luckily, this is just plain black. So uh, I don't think there's much we need to do on the interior. The one thing I am a little bit disappointed about is this area here, the roof. We have no sunroof at all, no panoramic, no slidey, no tilt, nothing. It is just a roof. Good news though, is at the back of the car, right here, the boot, works on this one. Let's give it a sec. Now there's one benefit of doing a facelift on this car, which is the plan, in that the front bonnet, the hood here, has a common problem that I noticed on the last blue car. Check this out here. Windscreen wipers, when they move, gradually wear away the metal here. And it's a, uh, it's a known fault with these cars. <laughs> now it reminded me of the BBI. Now there's one big bonus with this car compared to the previous blue one, in that it's got less mileage. Almost 60,000 miles less on this car, which means it's only got 237,000, making it a low mileage Tesla. Now the reason this car, like the previous one, has such high mileage is they were both used by Go Zero as very plush chauffeur cars. Where to, sir? Buckingham Palace, please. Rightio. Now, one thing I love about this Model S is it's a 2015 car, and when it was new, it was 80, over 80,000 pounds. It's eight years old, and it's now less than 10% of its value at 7,000. That is a lot of car for 7,000 pounds. Let me show you what 7,000 will buy you as an alternative. This Volkswagen Polo is the same kind of year and well, to buy one of these is nine and a half thousand pounds. Now I reckon that is probably about half the value one of these was brand new, which makes our Tesla an absolute bargain. What would you prefer, Polo or Model S? Now to pass the hours of boredom while you're sat at a supercharger, Tesla have got some pretty funky games in this toy box here. So first of all, you can have fun with your passengers uh, doing that. Then we've got things like backgammon that me and Lexi have been playing. My favorite game of all though is this. The car is so silent. O oh, is walking to the shop. Watch this. You can't hear it. <laughs> Nice thing about this replacement car is it's exactly the same model and it doesn't change the original plan we had for the blue car, which was £7,000 was what we have paid for this replacement car and we still got the £3,000 budget and we've already bought all of those parts, which means they don't go to waste, which is great. The only thing that I'm out of pocket by is £20, which we spent aligning the blue car, which I can't get back. But... 20 pound I can live with. So, with that being said, let's use some of these parts and start transforming the replacement car. First up, it's those 19 inch wheels. Now I firmly believe a good set of alloys can make or break a car, and I don't really think they suit it. Let me show you what I mean. First dilemma is where are the jacking points on one of these? It's not very, very obvious. On Ferraris, it's got a great big plate underneath. Um, and we're not having a lot of luck with batteries on Teslas. I don't really want to put the jack through the battery. So we're gonna be a bit careful here. That looks good. There's one there and there's one at the front that looks exactly the same. 
Let's play it safe and go there. Safety first, guys. Not exactly sure how you meant to get these things off. There's probably a special tool somewhere. Not in this car, though. Got these lovely Mac Tools wheel socket sets. They've got this little protection kind of rubber bit around the outside so you don't scuff the wheels. Ready? <coughs> I like that. That's a really nice bit of kit. That's heavy. Nice. Stick that on here, babe. This one comes with a free spider. Gotcha. A little bit more heavy than Ferrari ones. Look at that bad boy. All right, so I've got my uh, wheel nut covers here, but I can straight away see they are not going to work. But look at the depth of that. Look how much these protrude. That is going to do diddly squat. Look at the old one. It's twice, twice the depth. So for now, we're going to have to look and use these ones, aren't we? Never mind. And there you go. Case in point, how much better does this car look already with a decent set of wheels? Now let's do the other one. Okay, let's see. The other thing we're going to be doing down in this area is with the calipers after 237,000 miles they're looking a little bit tired so we're going to be changing these to red we're not going to do that right now and uh why are we going red well owen assures me if i paint these red we're going to get at least another 20 mile an hour out of this car okay owen's just giving me the numbers to uh talk these up 129 foot pounds of torque which is quite a lot which is probably about what do you reckon eh? about that i think about that yeah a little weird thing we've just discovered is, um, well, um, our studs seem to come out further on this one wheel. Um, I wondered if I had the wheels the wrong way around. They're not staggered, these ones. They're all exactly the same. 8.5J and uh, 21 inch. But the other one on that side, when you put the caps on, they sit flush. So um, we're just measuring up the studs. 129 129 129 129 I don't know, I think it's the collar down there more I think it's fouling it Because it doesn't feel like it's coming that deep, does it? No Here's the problem We've got longer covers on one wheel how bizarre is that? There you go. And the issue is, these are the black ones I was going to replace it with. They're smaller still. Brilliant. So we've got to find some more, more of these. Anyway, the good thing is, it's not a safety issue. It's just a stupid cap issue. The last step we need to do is change the configuration on the car. You can see on my image here on the dash, we've got the old style wheels, which is not a problem because if we come into our center console here, we get a wheel configuration. We get a 21 inch, we put in, the color we've got the sonic carbon turbines we haven't got staggered this is just standard on here we confirm that and then this should reboot and we'll have a different image on the dash okay as we have a few things on this car that was a bit flaky and it hasn't worked i'm going to try it again we've just uh, researched something if we go to uh, service wheel config 21 inch Carbon confirm. Apparently, we get out the car, lock it, unlock it, get back in. Let's try that. Ready? This is like a will it work? Won't it a game again? Yeah. Let's see. Oh, it does look like it's done some kind of reboot, hasn't it? It's rebooting the screens. That one's coming up. <clears throat> then it's gone down. Been here before. Coming up again. Oh, oh yeah, 
we got cool wheels. That makes me feel good already. <laughs> Look at that. Ah, one thing I didn't mention about this car, we also have some uh, delamination going on behind all of this display, which apparently, again, is a common problem on these cars. I'm sure that's really cheap to fix. While we wait for this whole thing to reboot, which is doing it a third time, hasn't booted that one up yet, which is a little bit concerning, let's check out the build quality, because, uh, well, these cars don't have the best reputa rep well, reputation. There you go. That's, that's pretty good, isn't it? That, that dash. Um, I just said about the delamination on there. You can really see it. This has got all my fingerprints on it. I can't really blame anyone. It's squeaky, which is not normally a problem if you're in a loud Ferrari, but uh, in a quiet car like this, you hear everything. Look at this. This annoys me. You put your arm on here, it slides back as you're driving. All right, it's done it. It's looking good. Let's have a look at the uh, configuration now. 21 inch Sonic carbon turbines. Looking good. And there you go. They look so much better. And uh, I think it was well worth the money, 750 quid for a set of wheels to transform this car. And don't forget, I can offset that by selling the old ones. And um, well, I'm happy with that. Now I've got one more part to order that I need to complete that whole uh, front end facelift on the Tesla. And it is this part here, the lower under tray at the front. Now, the problem I have, this is Tesla's parts catalog, which is not too bad. You can get it online, there's no charge to it, uh, but it's not quite Ferrari. The issue I have is sales restriction is over the counter, so you can get these parts, but where do you get them? I've looked everywhere, you cannot just go to Tesla and pick up these parts. You have to go on an app, on your phone, with your configurator and order the part, which is not simple because my car is the earlier model, so it looks for parts at for that car. So uh, if anyone knows how you go about doing this, is there such a place as a parts counter for Tesla? Drop in the comments below. Now the good thing about this car is, like the old one, it is also free supercharging for life, which is, as long as this car actually uh, Last a little bit, gonna be free motoring. Oh, yeah. I love filming in the rain. There we go, it's done. Oh my. You guys love the British weather, haven't you? Look at that. Two seconds out there and uh, I'm drenched right through. All right, here's the cool thing about this car is this bit here zero cost to charge i don't actually know what it would cost normally per kilometer well we're going to research that right now so doing a little bit of research and to give you a comparison let's give you two comparisons first of all my truck was about 122 brim it from empty and we were getting 350 400 i've got quite a heavy right foot so uh, we didn't quite get as much as we should have done out of that to charge an electric car here in the uk Overnight at home, the average cost is about £17 for a full charge, uh, which is for about 200 miles range on a 60 kilowatt battery. Uh, here, on a supercharger, from what we can find out, uh, depending if you're registered, if it's a Tesla, if it's a non-Tesla, somewhere between 50 and 77 pence per kilowatt. So that is more or less double what you're gonna be paying at home, uh, which is still not bad in comparison to diesel, and uh and petrol costs so uh still not as good as being free right <laughs> we are currently 87 miles um it is 221 we're going to see how long it takes to get this to what do you reckon oh, about 150 miles should yeah. give us a few days worth of uh, journeys all right let's do that so uh 221 this is the boring bit with teslas right but this is where you rearrange your life and while you're waiting here doing nothing i'm going to show you what we do to uh, pass the time. All right guys, so quick update for you. We are 155 miles now, 258, which means, what was it, uh, 221 when we started? So uh, just over 35 minutes, we've got another 80 miles range on it. And while we have been waiting for this to charge, we've passed the time by editing this next video, this current video that you're gonna watch right now, on the fly, in the car, and um, well, it's passed some otherwise very boring time sat waiting here right now the irony of this particular supercharging uh, station is that 
a couple of years ago when I think about it was probably about two years ago when I first started my YouTube channel this had all just been installed and um, well I was taking the absolute out of Tesla because they built it here which is a floodplain as you can see it's pouring with rain and uh, I don't know if they fixed anything to uh, alleviate all the water that settles around here but um, I'll show you what it looked like a couple of years ago. Here in the UK over the past few weeks we've had a couple of storms and quite a lot of rainfall. The unfortunate thing about this for Tesla and its car owners is the local supercharger park here in Woking in Berkshire is half submerged underwater. And that's really not what you want to see when you've got high powered superchargers kicking out lots of electricity. You don't want them underwater because, um, well, I don't like gambling that much with my life. Stop charging, unlock, 191 miles. We're gonna do one more test. Now I don't think I'm your typical Tesla driver that they calculate all of these uh, mileage and range from because I seem to have a little bit of a heavy right foot having come from driving many years in a Ferrari. <laughs> We're gonna do a real world test here. Currently, 189 miles, it is predicting my range is. We'll, uh, we'll average this out over the next 20, 30 miles. We've done one mile so far. So it was 190 miles. Let's see, really, how many miles this actually does with my driving style. One good thing is, this one actually drives straight. We don't have to do anything. <laughs> Anyone know the incidentally how to do a jailbreak on the Tesla so we can put the, uh, the played software on it, do all the upgrades on it and make this thing like the Millennium Falcon. <laughs> so the plan has not changed on the Tesla with this new replacement. I still want to do a facelift on it and well, that's just personal preference. Some of you in the comments from the previous video like the old one. Well, that's up to you. Anyway, we have the uh, bumper here already, uh, which is not too bad at all. It's got some surface uh, scuffs on it. So we're gonna use this special filler. We're gonna do all that. That's all over here. Uh, we're just gonna rub out a lot of these are just surface scratches and this is getting repainted anyway. It's gonna just go black with the rest of the car. We're gonna uh, fill in some of these number plate holes. And the main thing we're gonna do on this one was we've got one little crack on it so what we're going to uh, attempt to do is fix that by using a plastic welder which has got some staples and we might just bridge that as well at the same time just put a bridge across the back of it just to give it some strength but um that's the plan let's crack on with it One bit of damage on this one that we're gonna rectify, which is this crack down here. And this is the plan we have come up with. We have got one of these heated kind of staple gun, I guess. What would you call it? Heated staple gun? Yeah. We're gonna experiment. We've got a couple of little bits of plastic here. We're gonna put them together. Now in the kit, we've got these various different styles of uh, staple like this so i think we're going to try this one here so what we're going to do is you uh, put it in the end there in the two prongs press the trigger it heats it up and um it should melt it into our plastic let's give it a go shall we look at that let's sink that right in there now this is only thin bit of plastic here but you can see, look straight away, that is nice and strong. And uh, we're only gonna have a little bit of flex in that bumper, so we're gonna do this. I'm gonna do this, and then we're gonna trim off these kind of little arms here. And then, on top of that, I'm gonna get another more rigid bit of plastic, and we're gonna seal it with some Tiger Seal on top of it, so we've got a nice, sturdy fix. See how it goes. All right, let's see if this works. So O is gonna hold that together. I'm gonna to try not to put the staple in Owen's hand. 
here we go oh i can hear it sizzling i'm gonna push that right in now this this is a lot thicker this plastic so we can go right in i might have gone a bit too far with that i'm gonna put about three on this around the crack all right so we have put in six staples in the end first one i uh i did screw up I went all the way through, I went too far through, so we've taken that out. Uh, we've got a little bit of a ridge there, so that's no problem, we're gonna fill it, and like I say, this is the underside, you don't even see this thing. And it's all scuffed up from where it uh, hits speed bumps and stuff, anyway. So what we're gonna do next is, we're gonna trim off these, and then some of that plastic that I used before, we're just gonna put a couple of bits across there, a long one and a small one there, just to bridge it, and um, just put some tiger seal on it. That, it's probably the strongest part of the bumper now. <laughs> That's really impressive. That I think it's about 20 quid for that gun. So this stuff here is like magic. It's got a bit of flex in it and uh, very, very different to the texture of normal filler. You would never know that I had a crack there. Sorry, he's the man. So O has worked his magic on the bumper. It's really, really looking good. He's transformed it. We're uh, just doing a few final little touches on it. We're putting some primer on it, just so we've got a nice uniform color, where we can see any little imperfections that we've, uh, we've missed. All right, so that front bumper is now all done. It's repaired and it's in primer, ready to go to the body shop to get a coat of paint along with the new style front bonnet. Okay, this is where I missed the truck a little bit, but uh, it should fit in the Tesla. We're gonna get that off to the body shop. And then in the next video, we're gonna start to transform this Tesla into something that I'm happy to use as a daily driver. Thanks for watching guys. I'll see you all very shortly in the next one. Don't forget, you can check out what I get up to on a daily basis over on my socials. Until the next time, stay safe and ciao for now.